It is August 19th in preparation for the upcoming eclipse, which is going to be passing through an area that I can get to. Um, I need to take some video. So, I've been fooling around with my telescope, you know, staring at the sun and whatnot. And uh, I'm filming on the camera that I'm going to use with the telescope, my garage camera. Um, I have this, which is several years old. This fits in the Nikon flange that I use for my camera. And it has a 52 millimeter thread on the outside. I want to say it's 52. I don't know. Yeah, it's 52. Anyway, the idea of this adapter is that you can put your lens on backwards and do extreme macro stuff. That's not the point. It also happens to have a smooth inner surface. This was like $2 on eBay or something. So I'm going to use this to go into the camera. And then this is one of the eyepieces from the telescope. I'm going to make just a basic adapter between the two so that I can stick the camera right on the, uh, right on the, uh, the eyepiece hole, whatever it's called, of the telescope. I'm not a telescope guy. I don't, I don't really know what they're called. And then I can use the doodad to move it in and out to get focus. Um, I've tested it, you know, just viewing on a piece of paper, and it seems to work just fine. So, uh, yeah, I won't have any zoom control, but I should have focal control. Let's get to it. Should be very straightforward. I just need to start with a piece of stock this size, which I have. Haha! <laughs> Bingo! It's perfect. Perfect perfection. Yeah. Alrighty. According to this eyepiece, we need to get down to approximately, and I'm going to go just a little bit fat because the eyepiece has a loose fit and I want to get into a tighter fit. So this is 1.24. I'm going to go to 1.25, I guess. Maybe I'll start with 1.255. Doesn't really matter. another let's see 70 thousandths and we'll do it in a at a higher speed in prep for our finishing finish 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 okay all right taking the measurement and I've decided that one point 255 is what I'm going to go for. Should be a nice snug fit. My eyepiece dealy happens to be plastic, so it should be fine. And I'm at 1.26. So I'll just give it one little one little gentle pass and we'll call it good here. Maybe I'll maybe I'll take a little little finish springy pass too. We'll see. All right. That ought to do it. Finish is good. We cut a little relief in the corner there, so that doesn't jibber up at all. It's not quite as small as I would like. It's still, I only took off two thousandths. Let's do one more cut. Add a few thousandths to that. Okay, that should do the trick. I have, what is this, a one inch? This is a one inch silver and Deming. Yeah, whatever. We got a lot of margin. It'll be a quarter of an inch thick still. It'll be fine. Famous last words, right? <laughs> It'll be fine. This is a rough operation. I wouldn't care about center drilling, but this silver and deming will really wander in this particular tailstock setup that I've got. So, yeah. Alright, let's go a little slower, shall we? 190. That's boringly 
really slow, huh? Ridiculously awful surface finish on the inside, so we'll give that a quick clean up on the bore here. My, the OCD is kicking in. I need to get some of those, like, the diamond-shaped carbides, you know, so that I can do chamfers easily without having to mess with this. Uh, yeah, where's my other guy? Here we go. I'll put this guy on there. Give it a little touch. Nice chattery edge there. So I think this is ready to dismount. I'll go test it and then we'll flip it over and turn the other side to size. A little close to the chuck, but no problemo. And we are roughing for, let's see, roughing for one point, let's say 1.625. We got some doodles forming back there. All right, I gave it a, just a little bit of chamfer. I'll probably need to do that again when we get to final size. We should start to see some, you know, at least some interference. It's getting there. We could probably press it on and this piece would just stretch, but I don't know what kind of aluminum this is and I'm worried it would crack if we tried to stretch it. 585 1.591 Okay, so I will take off four thousandths. I'll try it again. Zero on the dial. Let's see here. Should be getting even closer. That's that's pretty darn close. I'll bet you we could press that in right now. I'll just bet you. This might not help. Even if it doesn't help, though, it'll make it prettier. That's what really matters, right? We're still going super fast. That should be fine. Bring our compound back a ways. Get ready. That has the visual appeal I'm looking for. A little conical shape inside there. So let's press it on. I'm going to take it over to the the milling machine vise. Make sure I get this oriented the right way here. Okay, got both of the pieces here in the milling vise. This is the poor man's arbor press. See if we can press this all together. Whoops. Press this all together without the aluminum cracking or either of the pieces skewing at an angle. So far, so good. I see it entering. It might crack. The outer ring might crack. If it does, frankly, I'm just going to deal with it. Just keep, keep on keeping on. Well, there we are. That looks lovely. I'm just going to press it all the way. And I did not put anything in there. There's no adhesive or anything in there. That looks pretty darn good, if I do say so myself. Make sure I oriented this correctly. Yeah, okay. That'd be embarrassing if I pressed it in backwards. So this, these are flush now. Perfectly flush. This part goes in the telescope. This part goes in the camera. And uh, now we pretty much have to go try it out, right? Yeah, let's go try it out.